The movie opens with a female voice narrator reflecting on a recurring dream about the dilapidated Manderley estate. The scene then shifts to summer in Monte Carlo at the Regal Hotel, where an unnamed young woman serves as a companion to the affluent Mrs. Van Hopper. The two are traveling together and currently staying at the hotel. Mrs. Hopper informs her companion that Maxim de Winter, the owner of Manderley, one of England's wealthiest estates, is present at the hotel. Hopper advises her companion to approach the situation strategically, suggesting that she tip the waiter to arrange for Max's table to be closer to theirs, with the aim of establishing connection with him. Mrs. Hopper adds that Max is still mourning the recent loss of his wife, Rebecca, while attempting to tip the waiter for the seating arrangement, the companion has the unexpected opportunity to meet Mr. De Winter in person. Shortly after, Mrs. Hopper arrived and engaged Max in conversation. Despite his efforts, Mrs. Hopper's persistence prevailed. Max, noticing the young woman he had encountered earlier with Mrs. Hopper, assumed she was a relative, but she clarified that she was merely a staff member. Throughout the night, Mrs. Hopper indulged in drinks and gossip with her friends, discussing Rebecca, Max's late wife. She instructed her companion to retrieve photos for Mr. Max, which never happened. When she returned, the scent of cheap rose perfume clung to her. The following morning, Mrs. Van Hopper felt unwell and requested her companion to summon a doctor. As Mrs. Hopper's condition failed to improve, alone, she made her way to the terrace for breakfast, only to find access denied, as it was not intended for staff members. Having witnessed the incident on the terrace, Mr. De Winter intervened inviting her to have breakfast with him. She explained her role as a companion to the frequently traveling Hopper, who compensated her with 90 pounds for her company yearly. Max inquired why work for someone like Mrs. Hopper. After the meal, he expressed his gratitude for her delightful company. Max sent a note to the girl later that day, waiting for her by his car. She happily accepted the invitation, fabricating a story for Mrs. Hopper about attending a tennis class. As they spent time together, they discovered a mutual understanding, both having experienced the loss of loved ones. During their walk, Max observed her intellectual depth and curiosity, realizing that he had been in great need of a conversational partner lately. After spending time together, he offered that she should drive them home. Initially hesitant, she eventually found the experience quite thrilling. However, her excessive curiosity and personal questions seemed to displease Max. Mrs. Hopper, suspecting that her companion's tennis lessons were a ruse, confronted her and she responded evasively. That evening, she berated herself for prying too much into Max's personal life. The next morning, she received another note from Max, and from then on, they began seeing each other every day. Mrs. Hopper's suspicions intensified, but she had fallen in love with Max, and this week became the best in her life, marked by romantic notes from him. Their dates continued and with each passing moment, parting became increasingly difficult. Meanwhile, Mrs. Hopper, feeling better, announced her fatigue with Europe and their departure for New York the next day. This news was an unpleasant surprise for her, who cried all evening. Mrs. Hopper, already aware of the secret affair, remarked that it was for the best, asserting that a maid is not a suitable match for someone like Maxim de Winter. On the morning when everything was already packed for departure, she's unable to bear the separation went to Max's room to bid farewell. Unaware of her sudden departure, Max, instead, offered her the opportunity to accompany him to Manderley as his wife knew Mrs. De Winter, and she agreed. He followed her to Mrs. Hopper. Learning of this, Mrs. Hopper pretended to be pleased for the news. When Max left, Mrs. Hopper candidly revealed to her former companion that he was marrying to avoid living alone in Manderley with Rebecca's ghost haunting him. The companion responded that she doesn't believe in ghosts, bid Mrs. Hopper farewell and left. The scene then transitioned to her and Max driving to the beautiful Manderley estate. Upon arrival, the entire staff welcomed the him and his wife. Max grabbed his wife on his shoulder and carried her into the mansion, introducing her to the housekeeper, Mrs. Danvers, who exuded an impression of coldness and sternness. Max also introduced his wife to Frank Crawley, the estate manager. As the men had business matters to attend to, Max asked the housekeeper to show her around the mansion. Danvers guided the new, the new wife through the corridors and rooms of the mansion, a family estate that had been in existence for over 300 years, a gift dated back since Henry VIII. The grandeur felt like a fairy tale to her, having never experienced such luxury before. 
The mansion boasted a vast library adorned with paintings and family portraits hanging on the walls. Coming from a humble background, the new Mrs. De Winter clearly felt out of place in this aristocratic circle. Finally, Mrs. Danvers showed her the bedroom, explaining that it used to be a guest room as the late Mrs. De Winter's bedroom was elsewhere. Mrs. Danvers spoke extensively about Rebecca, expressing warm sentiments that made the new wife uncomfortable. Despite this, when alone with her husband, she managed to forget the unsettling aspects. She then asked her husband regarding his late wife, but he consistently avoided such conversations. At night, she experienced nightmares, and at times felt uneasy in the mansion. Additionally, Max suffered from sleepwalking. Mrs. Danvers advised her never to wake him during these episodes. She struggled to adjust to her new life in the luxurious mansion. During breakfast, she asked Max about his sleepwalking yesterday. He simply wished her a good appetite and left. Despite the mansion being large and filled with people, everything seemed cold and unfamiliar to her. She discovered a room she had yet to explore. Curiosity overcame her. She explored, and it was the bedroom that once belonged to Rebecca. She searched through the belongings and accidentally broke a porcelain item. In her haste to clean up the fragment, she injured her hand and concealed the fragments, hoping no one would find out. Shortly, a reception was scheduled in the house. Mrs. Danvers showed her the menu without even reading the menu. The housekeeper mentioned that Rebecca, Max's late wife, who pay attention to sauce, confused, she asked her to choose the sauce that Rebecca would have preferred. One day, as Max and his wife were strolling through the estate, their dog, Jasper, led her to a cabin by the sea. It was evident that this place had been abandoned. The dog growled and barked for some reason. Startling, she inquired if anyone was there. The dog continued to behave strangely, and behind a curtain, she saw a man who turned out to be the watchman's son. The man gave the impression of being mentally challenged and mentioned that this dog belonged to Rebecca, not Mr. De Winter, who had drowned at the sea. Now, she understood why Max avoided walking by the shore. It was where his beloved wife had drowned, and the place evoked painful memories for him. Guests arrived at the house, including Max's sister and her husband. She showed them wedding photos, and they recounted their honeymoon in Italy. Beatrice was delighted for her brother, who seemed finally ready to move on. Max's wife suggested reviving the tradition of holding balls. Beatrice and her husband accepted with enthusiasm, but Max doesn't feel comfortable with it. However, Max's very old grandmother, suffering from dementia, still believed that Rebecca was alive and that she was Max's wife. The grandmother demanded that her grandson explain what happened to Rebecca and who the new wife with him was. A very unpleasant situation arose. Apologizing to Mrs. De Winter, Beatrice, and her family left. Mrs. Danvers, who personally cleaned Rebecca's bedroom at her request, noticed that one of the porcelain items was missing. It was very expensive, and Robert, one of the servants, was suspected of theft. At that moment, Mrs. De Winter, barely holding back tears, confessed that she had broken the item and hidden the fragment. She didn't want Robert to be fired because of her, as everything in the house reminded her of Rebecca, even the handkerchiefs embroidered with the first letter of her name. The next day, she returned to the cabin by the sea, an unnecessary reminder of Rebecca. There, she was found by Frank, who was surprised to see her and mentioned that he would have locked her in. From Frank, she learned that Max had left for London on business that morning. Frank locked the cabin, explaining that Max disliked that place. He also told her about how Rebecca went alone on a boat for a sea outing, and a storm began. Rebecca never returned, and her body was found two months later. She was unaware of these details, and Frank advised her not to delve into the past. She asked Frank to honestly answer whether Rebecca was beautiful. He said she was the most beautiful creature he had ever seen. Rebecca's lingering presence in the house continued to weigh on her, compelling her to enter Rebecca's room. The room seemed inhabited still by Rebecca, and her solitude was interrupted by Mrs. Danvers, who mentioned leaving everything in the room as it was. Clearly, Mrs. Danvers was deeply attached to Rebecca and considered her perfect. The housekeeper combed her hair as she used to do for Rebecca. In contrast to her, Rebecca had gorgeous dark hair, and according to Mrs. Danvers, Mr. DeWinter used to laugh with her and comb her hair. Losing Rebecca, he would never be happy again, as he loved her more than life itself. Even though Rebecca had passed away, her presence was still felt in the house. Though reluctant to admit it, she also felt Rebecca's presence. 
At night, she dreamed of Rebecca wandering through the mansion. Jack Favell arrived at the estate, wanting to see Mrs. Danvers. Jack, surprised that Max did not take his new wife with him to London, revealed that he was Rebecca's cousin. He suggested to the her to go on a horse ride together, as it was one of Rebecca's favorite activities. Despite never having ridden before, she decided to accept the offer. Later, Jack asked her if Max had mentioned that Rebecca was in London the day she died. The girl replied that her husband never talked to her about it. On that fateful day, Jack was supposed to meet her for an important conversation, and now he would never know what she wanted to talk about. As it turned out, Max and Jack were far from being friends. So, Jack asked her not to mention his visit. Before leaving, he hinted her to be cautious with Max's temper. During dinner, she interrupted the servants and demanded Mrs. Danvers to explain why she invited Jack Favell for tea when he wasn't allowed to be there. Danvers claimed she hadn't seen Jack Favell for over a year and was unaware of his visit. Returning home, Max learned about Jack's visit, leading to a heated exchange where Max accused his wife of potentially wanting to have an affair with Jack. Mrs. Danvers, aware of the tension, shared details of the horse ride, further fueling Max's anger. Despite attempts to explain herself, she felt unwelcome in the house, with even the servants remaining loyal to Rebecca. Initially deciding to dismiss Danvers, she later changed her mind, seeking the housekeeper's assistance in navigating the mansion and aristocratic social circles. Mrs. Danvers, devoted to Rebecca since childhood, agreed to help her adjust. That evening, Max sought forgiveness from his wife, realizing she wasn't to blame for the past events. Excitement for the masquerade ball grew, and Mrs. Danvers assisted in designing her dress based on the lady in red portrait. As preparations unfolded, she aimed for perfection to impress aristocratic society. When the ball arrived, she donned her custom-made dress, and her husband expressed pride despite the storm outside. However, her attempt to resemble the lady in red with a dark wig led to a shocking moment. Max, deeming it a poor joke, ordered her to her room causing her to run away in tears. Repentant Clarice revealed it was Mrs. Danvers' idea, hinting at a deliberate attempt to mimic Rebecca's last ball attire. The guests could not stop gossiping about the incident, and concerned Beatrice went up to her room. She advised her to go out to the guests as if nothing had happened, as that's what any proud noblewoman would do. Beatrice found a simple dress for her. She gathered courage and went out to the guests, pretending that everything was fine, as advised by Beatrice. Max also tried to keep his temper, but only in front of the guests. Leaning towards his wife, he whispered that the ball idea was a mistake and that he regretted bringing her there. The guests were having fun, but she was not in a festive mood. Suddenly, she thought she saw Rebecca in the crowd and followed her, but the silhouette kept moving away until she lost sight of it. After the dance, fireworks were set off, and it seemed like everyone had forgotten the unfortunate incident. At night, Mrs. Danvers, who no longer concealed her hostile attitude toward her, said that she would never overshadow Rebecca, and the housekeeper was sure that she did not deserve neither Max nor this house. According to Mrs. Danvers, Max could never love her because she was not Rebecca. She couldn't bear to hear this anymore, but the housekeeper continued, telling her that she was not wanted by anyone. Unexpectedly, a commotion arose near the house when Frank Crowley's boat collided with a reef at sea. Divers retrieved Rebecca's boat, unveiling Rebecca's lifeless body identified by her hair and wedding ring engraving. Shockingly, Max had deceived everyone, substituting another woman's body for Rebecca's in the burial. Max's whereabouts became unknown after he was questioned by the police, never returning home. In a late-night encounter, he confessed to leaving Rebecca lifeless and sabotaging the boat to conceal the truth to his wife. Rebecca's public image as the perfect wife concealed a cruel and self-centered nature involving affairs with numerous lovers, including her cousin, Jack Favell. Max, unable to divorce her without tarnishing the family name, discovered Rebecca's pregnancy, further shattering his pride. The revelation led to a tragic end in the cabin, with another woman buried at sea in place of the real Rebecca. She inquired if he still loved Rebecca, and he replied no. Max confessed that all this time, he suffered not from love, but from hatred for his late wife, hindering his ability to move on. Despite Max's willingness to surrender to the police, his wife urged him not to hasten the process. Only they share the truth, and she refuses to let Rebecca's memory triumph completely.
The story created a significant sensation in the press, leading to the first court hearing. As planned with his wife, Danvers attended. Max responded to questions calmly, yet emotions eventually overcame him. The spouse's primary concern is preventing detectives from discovering the London doctor Rebecca visited, as it could unravel their carefully constructed narrative. On that very evening, Jack Favell visited Manderley, disclosing that he was meant to meet Rebecca in the cabin that day, but Max had preempted him. Jack possessed indisputable evidence, a letter from Rebecca. If presented to the judge, the letter would cast doubt on the notion that Rebecca willingly ended her life. Why else would she invite someone to visit? When his wife asked how much he sought for his silence, she demonstrated her shrewdness. Surprising the men, being an avid poker player, Jack Favell said he was willing to remain silent if they paid him 10,000 pounds. Mrs. Danver was listening without them knowing. Another court hearing took place. Mrs. Danvers, who was aware of the affair between Rebecca and Jack Favell, testified. The court already knew that Jack Favell wanted to conceal the note. A check for 10,000 pounds sterling confirmed it. According to Mrs. Danvers, sometime before her demise, Rebecca felt unwell and her stomach was growing. This led the court to conclude that she might have been pregnant. Upon hearing this, Jack caused a scandal in the courtroom, accusing Max of taking Rebecca and their unborn baby away from him. Max was arrested. At the moment, there was only circumstantial evidence against him, but if detectives find the London doctor Rebecca consulted, it will be over for him. Detectives searched the Manderley estate for clues. However, the wife preempted them, finding the doctor's address in Rebecca's personal records with Frank helping her. Accusing Frank of conspiring with Max to remove Rebecca from her life, Mrs. Danvers portrayed Rebecca as a stunning who toyed with men and uses them as she pleased. The revelation that Rebecca, someone of such beauty, carried a heavy secret to her grave pained her. Mrs. De Winters ordered Mrs. Danvers to pack her belongings and leave before nightfall. Meanwhile, with Max in custody, Mrs. Danvers prepared to depart from Manderley. De Winter, driven by determination, went to London, where she deceived a doctor to obtain documents. Afterward, she clandestinely studied Rebecca's medical history, only to discover that Rebecca's supposed pregnancy was, in fact, a concealed battle with cancer. Unfortunately, she was caught. She said she didn't change anything in the medical history, only read it. Now know that Rebecca was not pregnant, but was suffering from cancer. Apparently, Rebecca lied to her husband about the pregnancy to provoke him and make him end her suffering. Detectives are convinced that for the same purpose, Rebecca went to sea on the boat and deliberately sank her both. Max was released from custody. Now having found someone who truly loves and appreciates him, Mrs. Danvers set the estate on fire, destroying everything that belonged to Rebecca. Upon their return home, they witnessed the estate engulfed in flames. While Max helped extinguish the fire, his wife encountered her maid, who informed her that Mrs. Danvers was seen. In haste, she ran to look for Mrs. Danvers. Meanwhile, Mrs. Danvers stood on the rocky shore, contemplating taking a drastic step. His wife tried to persuade her not to, but Mrs. Danvers, with nothing more to lose, believed Manderley belonged only to Rebecca. In the end, she chose to drown herself in the water. The scene shifts to the couple in Cairo. Despite still grappling with nightmares about Manderley, a place laden with memories of Mrs. Danvers and Rebecca, she wakes up each morning and decides to leave the ghosts of the past behind. Content with the woman she has become, she is convinced that she made the right choice to preserve the one thing worth walking through flames for, love. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.